Hello everyone, welcome to an Upgrade Your OET Vocabulary Quiz with a speaking role play. Today's session is going to look at a shiner. If you don't know what that is, don't worry, you'll soon find out. We're also going to look at some lay language that you can use with a patient or that a patient might use with you. We'll also look at some treatment advice from the NHS and it's important to do that because the advice from the NHS is given in lay language. So that will help you to achieve some of the key criteria in your OET. We'll also look at pronunciation and you'll get the role plays so you'll be able to practice with a friend or a colleague. And we'll look at some useful language as well. As for me, my name's Sona and I'm a premium preparation provider of the OET. So my questions for you then are these, what is a shiner and what treatment advice would you give to a patient who has one? Well a shiner is actually a black eye, a contusion or bruise to the eye area and this is something that I was really worried about this weekend because I was doing some gardening and I had a bit of a fight with a bamboo cane support. What happened was I was tugging at it and it just suddenly gave and it walloped me. It flew straight up and smacked me on the cheek. So this is a very idiomatic way of me describing what happened to me this weekend. I'm a bit of a walking disaster. I think many of you have followed my ails and uh, medical complaints in these things. But these things happen and I was really worried that I would have a black eye and that of course I'd have to go to work and see my friends at the weekend and explain what happened. Luckily I treated it quickly and I didn't end up with a black eye but I was worried that I would and this made me think it would be a great practice role play for you to look at as well. And also as I was explaining this to you, I used quite a few idiomatic phrases and these are some phrases that a patient may use with you. So what do I mean exactly? Well, a bamboo cane is one of these things here. You can see it in this photograph and it's used to support plants as they're growing. And this expression here, I had a bit of a fight with, is a typical way, a humorous way, we can describe what happened. It wasn't an actual fight. But I was trying to pull this cane up. I was tugging at it and it just flew up and walloped me. It smacked me on the cheek. So to smack is to hit someone with the flat of your hand or a flat object. In this case, it was a cane and the pronunciation here is smack. Tug means to pull someone or something by making a short, strong movement. So the cane was firmly stuck in the ground, so I had to pull it up with some force. And the pronunciation here is tug. And it just gave, suddenly it became free. It wasn't stuck anymore. This took me as surprised and it walloped me. It hit someone or something very hard, it hit me. Sorry, that should be a two there, ignore that O. To hit someone or something very hard and that means to wallop. So that's what happened to me. I was injured from a cane just by my own force. I didn't know how strong I was. I'm not very strong, by the way. That's why I was tugging at it so dramatically. So what treatment advice would you give a patient then? As ever, just a quick reminder, I'm not a healthcare professional myself. I'm an English teacher who's a premium preparation provider. So all my medical advice comes from the NHS or other reputable sources. I will put the link for this in the information box below so you can go away and have a look at it as well. So a black eye, of course, is bruising and swelling around your eye and usually caused by a blow, a hit to the area, such as a punch or a fall. In my case, a flying bamboo cane. And it should get better within two to three weeks. Luckily, I didn't have a black eye. But if I did want, how would I have eased it? Or what treatment advice could you give a patient who's got a black eye? So you would tell them to gently hold an ice pack or a bag of frozen peas wrapped in a cloth to the area around their eye for about 10 to 20 minutes at a time. So at intervals and to repeat this regularly over the first one to two days. 
you'd advise them to take painkillers, analgesics, and then after the first two days to apply a warm, not hot, compress around the eye quite regularly. You'd remind them not to take aspirin unless it's been prescribed to them because this might make the bruising worse and encourage them not to rub the area. It's quite tempting just to kind of keep pressing it to make sure it's okay and it still hurts, but I shouldn't be doing that. And of course, don't put any ice directly on the skin because it might burn the skin. Now, normally these incidents aren't serious, but if your patient has any severe pain or swelling or a headache that doesn't go away, or blurry vision, they can't see clearly, or perhaps the area around their eye is warm or leaking pus, they have a very high temperature or are feeling as if they do, or they're on blood thinning medication or have a bleeding disorder, then they should call their GP or the medical hotline for further advice. If it's something more serious, so if there's blood visible in their eye, or they have a pupil that's shaped irregularly, or perhaps the blow has actually occurred to both of their eyes across their head, or they're having serious problems with their vision, double vision, when they're seeing two of everything, or they can't see, or are seeing flashing lights or halos or are having pain, then they should go to the emergency department, the accident and emergency. If they can't move their eye, similarly, you should direct them straight to the emergency department to get advice. So we're going to be having a look at some speaking practice together and we're going to look at some useful phrases and also some ways that you can implement the OET speaking criteria. Just a little request from me before we move on, if you like these videos please click on that like button, share this with a friend or a colleague and subscribe to us so you can always get up to date information about when we release new quizzes or practice sessions. Okay, as promised then, here is the role play for a nurse. I'm going to give you three minutes to look through it, as you would in the exam, and to pick out anything interesting and prepare what you're going to say. I'd also like you to think about what kind of criteria this role play might be looking at. For more information on criteria, you can head to our Udemy on-demand course where you'll be able to find out more about the actual criteria itself. Okay, your three minutes starts now.
What did you pick up then? So the setting is a walk-in centre. Now this is something that you would find in the UK, not necessarily in your OET speaking subtest, but I think it's important to practice everyday scenarios as well. A walk-in centre is not exactly the hospital, it's a clinic where if you have a problem it's not serious but you still want to see a healthcare professional, you would go to the walk-in centre. So a 24 year old patient has come to see you, they've got a black eye and they'd like some treatment advice as he or she has to go to work the next day. So this obviously should alert you to the fact that you have to be sympathetic. They've got this black eye, it obviously doesn't look very attractive and they have to go to work the next day. So they'll be looking for some relationship building, some sympathy, um, some empathy being displayed here. Of course, you've got the information gathering part where you have to ask about the injury and whether anything actually entered the eye itself and if their vision has been impacted. And then you have the information giving part as well, which is the various treatments, options, etc. In this session today, we're going to focus on the being sympathetic part, asking the patient how it happened, finding out if their vision has been impacted and also advising the patient on what to do. So we're not going to look at everything in this session, but just some interesting parts here. And we're going to relate this back to what we looked at in the NHS advice as well. So some useful phrases then, how can you ask the patient about their injury? First of all, I think acknowledge the problem. They've got a black eye, it's all bruised. So I think it's important that you say something about that rather than just going straight into how did it happen. So set up that rapport at the beginning and start by saying something like, oh dear, that doesn't look very comfortable. Can you tell me how it happened? Now at this stage, you don't know how it's happened. Perhaps this patient, for example, is the victim of domestic abuse, in which case you would have to follow a different pathway. But in this case, it's a gardening accident. So can you tell me how it happened? Then of course you'd find out whether anything entered the eye itself. So, and did anything enter the eye? For me, luckily, no. How then can you find out if their vision has been impacted? So nothing actually entered the eye, but you still want to check, you want to make sure. Although you've got a lot of information here, remember part of information gathering is to ask simple questions that are easy to understand and that are not compound questions. So you're not asking more than one thing at the same time. So even though the role play might tell you to ask several different things, break it down. Are you able to see normally? So ask an open question, then narrow it down. And can you see any blood in your eye at all? How about any kind of flashing lights or strange spots? So allow the patient to answer each question before moving on. Don't ask it all at the same time. And then again, for sympathy, well, that's good. So be encouraging. It means that it's just a superficial injury which should heal by itself. So we need lots of support here for the patient, lots of encouraging. So before moving on, give that little bit of encouragement to your patient. Now, again, how can you advise the patient that it takes a few days? That's not what they want to hear. They have to go to work. So again, be encouraging. Well, you know, these things happen. Even though it may look dramatic, it's nothing terrible. These things happen. But at the same time, acknowledge their issue. I realise that it might be uncomfortable for you at work. Give them some suggestions. Are you able to take a couple of days off work until the bruising has settled down? So we've got a phrasal verb here, which means subsided or eased. Or perhaps you can explain to your boss what happened and see if you can be given some work away from the shop floor so that they don't have to explain to each customer that comes in what happened to them. So again, being really sympathetic to your patient. 
Well, I hope you found that useful. Here's a patient card if you want to practice with a friend or a colleague. Just take a screenshot and see how you go. For more information about our on-demand courses, then take a look at the information box below. Thanks very much for watching. Why not watch another of our videos right now and see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.